Okay, guys, in this lesson, we are going to talk about the basics of our senses and how they work. So what the heck are senses anyways? Well, sense is just a neural pathway that receives a signal and sends it up to the central nervous system for interpretation. So you get some sort of signal like feeling hot water in your skin. And then that sensory nerve sends a signal up through uh, the spinal cord or to the brain where the signal gets interpreted. And that's your senses. Now, this is just part of the process. The second half is that motor reflex process. But for this lesson, we're just going to focus on the sensory part. So everything starts down in these sensory receptors. Now, these are just modified parts of a little sensory neuron that are designed to receive and respond to a stimulus. Now, with most sensory neurons, we actually see something called specificity. And that just means that these receptors are designed to detect and respond to one kind of specific stimulus. So once it detects that stimulus, um, it starts these local depolarizations. We talk about those in the neuro section. And as those local depolarizations start adding together and summating, we actually start to see the development of an action potential. And that action potential is a signal that gets sent down the neuron to the brain and spinal cord for interpretation so that they can react to it. So that's your senses. That's the function of the sensory receptors. So let's just talk a uh, quick overview of senses. There's five major senses, touch, which we are going to talk about in detail in this lesson, vision, which is controlled by cranial nerve two, and hearing, which is cranial nerve eight. We also have taste or gustation, which is cranial nerves seven and nine. And so basically what happens with taste is chemicals in our food get dissolved in our saliva in our mouth and our taste buds are able to sense and respond to those chemicals. And your taste buds on your tongue are basically just little clusters of taste cells. And there's five different types of taste cells. There's salty, sweet, bitter, sour, and umami. And umami is just a fancy name for uh, the taste that you get with meat proteins. So the fifth sense is smell or olfaction, and that's controlled by cranial nerve one, which is the olfactory nerve. And basically what happens is we have volatile chemicals in the air, and all that really means is that they evaporate, and so we're able to breathe them in. So volatile chemicals in the air, they come into the epithelium in our nose, and those sensory neurons, sensory receptors detect them and send that signal up through the olfactory nerve into our brain so that we can interpret it. So now that I've mentioned sensory receptors, let's look a little bit closer at the types of receptors that we have. There's three main types of sensory receptors. External receptors respond to external stimuli. So this is things like sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. These are the main things that we think of when we think of senses. Now, this could be things in our skin um, or our mucous membranes, and that would be cutaneous. And then we could also see um, some of our pain receptors being external as well. And we'll look at that in much more detail in just a second. We also have proprioceptors, which are responsible for helping us interpret position and movement. So basically, it helps us know our position in the world physically, like Am I hanging upside down? Am I spinning in circles, turning left, turning right, et cetera? If you can't see, these proprioceptors help you to figure out where you are in space, even if you couldn't actually see it. And then lastly, we have enteroreceptors, and those help us respond to internal sim stimuli. So extero, external, entero, internal. Um, so that comes from within our body. So let's look a little closer at these two, the external and internal receptors. So remember, external receptors respond to external stimuli, and that includes cutaneous or receptors in our skin and mucous membranes. So there's four different things that they respond to. Now, in your outline, I've given you details about those specific receptors, um, but we're just going to talk in general here. So we see tactile receptors, um, and those respond to light touch and help us perceive the difference between things like sharp, dull, and soft. Um, so these corpuscles and Merkel's discs, those are all types of tactile receptors. We also have receptors in our subcutaneous tissue that help us respond to deep pressure. And then we have free nerve endings that are gonna help us respond to temperature, so changes in temperature, telling the difference between hot and cold, et cetera. And then finally, we have another type of free nerve ending called nociceptors that help us respond to pain, specifically in this case, we're talking about in our skin. 
Now, when we're talking about pain, there's actually four types of pain that we can detect with our sensory receptors. So you need to know about these four types. The first type is superficial somatic pain. When we think somatic, we think, you know, skin, muscles, things like that. So superficial is going to be any pain we feel in our skin or our tongue. So this might be things like getting a cut, um, maybe you got an ulcer on your tongue or possibly you burned yourself. So that's superficial somatic pain. Then we have deep somatic. And this is pain that's felt in our muscles and our tendons, possibly also even our ligaments or our bones. And it, as you can tell, it's deeper um, and usually a bit more intense than superficial somatic pain. So this might be things like getting a fracture in a bone or possibly even tearing a ligament or a tendon. Now, the next type is visceral. And anytime you see the word visceral, I want you to think organ. I mean, anytime you see it, okay? So visceral pain is pain that comes from our internal organs. So this could be like uh, stretching in your stomach if your stomach gets too full um, or possibly a lack of blood flow, which is what ischemia means. So if you have a lack of blood flow to an organ, it's going to hurt. You're going to feel that pain. Obviously, it's very internal and sometimes it's kind of hard to pinpoint. And then the last type is unique. It's called referred pain. So this is when pain from one area is actually felt in another. Now let me give you an example. The heart and the left arm are have the same neural pathway when it goes to the spinal cord. So if this is our spinal cord, they have a pathway here and a pathway here, and then they join and go through the same spinal nerve into the spinal cord. So what happens if you have a problem with your heart, let's say you had a myocardial infarction or a heart attack, the brain receives this signal from the heart and it kind of gets confused because it's never felt that signal before. So it interprets it as coming from the left arm because that's something that it understands. So that's the theory behind referred pain is that these two places actually share a spinal nerve or share a sensory pathway um, and that the brain is misinterpreting it. So the classic example here is of a heart attack being felt as pain in the left arm. And then we could also see things like liver damage present with right shoulder pain. Again, it's called referred pain. The pain refers to another location. So lastly, we have enteroreceptors. Remember, these are responding to internal stimuli. Now, I'm not going to go into super deep detail here because in other lessons, we're going to talk about how these actually impact the body. So let's just run through them quickly. Baroreceptors respond to changes in blood pressure. Baro actually means pressure. So anytime you see baro, think pressure. So chemoreceptors respond to chemical changes in the blood or body fluids. So this would be a, something like a lack of oxygen, um, too much CO2, changes in your pH, or possibly changes in your gastric acid concentration. The chemoreceptors will pick that up and send that signal to the brain. Now, osmoreceptors detect concentration of the blood. So basically, they're looking at how much water is in there. Is there enough water? Is there too much water? Temperature receptors are going to be able to detect um, our internal body temperature. So we're talking about core temp here. And they're going to send that signal to the brain. And our temperature is controlled by our hypothalamus. Then we also see no C receptors. No C receptors are our pain receptors. So we can see these in the skin, but also inside the vital organs. So if your organs are stretching or if they have a lack of blood flow or ischemia, you're going to get uh, pain receptors from those no C receptors. And then finally, we see stretch receptors in the lungs. They actually detect changes in the lung volume so your can body, body can respond to it. So again, these are sensory receptors that respond to internal stimuli in the body. Okay, let's recap really quick. So sensory receptors function to detect and respond to specific types of stimuli, and then they send those signals to the central nervous system for interpretation. We have five main senses, touch, vision, hearing, taste, and smell. We have exterior receptors that respond to external stimuli, both pain-related as well as through the skin or the mucous membranes. We have proprioceptors that help us to determine our position and movement, so you know if you're upside down, even if you can't see. And then we have enteroreceptors, which help us respond to internal stimuli. So it's things like blood pressure changes, chemical changes, visceral pain, uh, temperature, and stretch of the lungs. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. 
Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.